Hey guys, hope you're uh, going to have a good weekend here. We're going to finish off with 15.7 day two. We're going to evaluate triple integrals over solids. Want to do this quickly uh, and see if we can squeeze this into one video. We'll hope for the best here. Uh, for the special case when your function, and remember, this is a function of x, y, and z, so it's uh, really like W or some other variable would equal 1. Uh, let's just say that that was your, your function inside of the integral. If that were the case, in a wonderful comparison to what we've seen before, this triple integral of evaluating this over some solid would actually represent the volume of that solid. Uh, so that's a real cool application where you could say, hey, if I'm given a picture and sometimes you will be given a picture that's always wonderful when you are uh, and uh, you could say hey let's just say that you're given two paraboloids you're given z equals 5x squared plus 5y squared and uh, that's a paraboloid that opens up and that's the lighter one this would be uh, the very uh, end of what was depicted down here would be its vertex. You know, its vertex would be down there at z equals zero. So it's like a three-dimensional parabola uh, going upwards. And then here is z equals six minus seven x squared minus y squared. Uh, that's really uh, the paraboloid that's going to be opening upside down. You can see right here, uh, kind of looking kind of like a gumdrop. And uh, those two paraboloids cut into each other. They intersect each other. And, you know, uh, the author is even helping us out saying, you know, look, they're going to be you know, crossing somewhere around there and, and they're going to form a, a solid. Uh, you can think, oh my goodness, we've got this solid encapsulated. So you can think, oh my word, how can we begin to, you know, make sense of, of what's happening with that solid's volume? Well, we're going to do what we just did a moment ago. We're going to work out this integral uh, with a one inside. Uh, but you can see already, if we were to make this uh, really like a type one solid, a type one solid would say, hey, this triple integral, as we'd integrate this uh, E right here, if it was a type one solid, we could say, First, we're going to integrate with respect to z, and then we'd, you know, see that once we do that, z would drop out of the mix, and uh, then you could see very quickly that uh, there'd be a shadow uh, that would be projected from that solid down to the remaining axes, the x, y uh, plane. And you could think, well, my gosh, well, how do we make some sense of all of that? Well, we're going to in, in just a moment. First of all, let's talk about boundaries with Z, you know, and, and you could just, uh, you know, say here's this, uh, you know, kind of a Z segment, a segment parallel to the Z axis. And, you know, of course, we're going from one paraboloid to the other. Those paraboloids are encapsulating each other, almost like a medicine, uh, you know, capsule. Except that you know we've got paraboloids, uh, you know, intersecting right there. And you think, wow, uh, what's at the top of that uh, z boundary? Well, it, it would be the paraboloid that opens up or down. What do you think? The one that opens down. That would be your six minus seven x squared minus y squared. And then down below here, you'd have your paraboloid that opens up, and you'd have 5x squared plus 5y squared. And you'd say, well, great. All you have to do is you know, just envision that type 1 solid and say, where are the boundaries for z from top to bottom there? Hopefully that's pretty you know, straightforward. The author is being exceptionally kind here in that uh, Professor Stewart's also saying, hey, by the way, when you, uh, you know, look at the shadow that would be cast from that solid down to the xy plane, you'd get the circle 2x squared plus y squared equals 1. 
And that just begs the question, well, wow, that sure is nice that we were given that. How in the world would you get that? How in the world would you ever begin to, to know what that is? Obviously, it looks like a circle. You could say, well, wow, I, I don't know. Well, guys, I, I hope you can see that, yes, these uh, paraboloids do, in fact, intersect each other. You can think, where do they intersect each other? Set the Z's equal. You see, because you're going to find the intersections. That's like the where those two curves are going to touch. And where are they going to touch? Well, they're going to touch at some outer region where uh, you're going to be able to say, hey, as I do that, and you know what exactly would that uh, shape look like? It, even if you didn't see it, it would look like a circle. Let's go ahead and solve and see what we'd get. If I added 7x squared to both sides, if I added a y squared to both sides, I'd get a 12x squared plus 6y squared would equal 6. When I divide by 6, I'd be at 2x squared plus y squared equals 1. Wow, that's what we're talking about. That would be where your curves are, are really intersecting. They'd be intersecting in a way uh, that uh, you would see that that would represent the uh, you know intersection and actually would cast down that outer touching it, even as we talked about uh, the garbage walls coming down and condensing the solid it would condense down here so the author was very kind in giving that to us and of course right now we could in a heartbeat graph that region uh, out here and by the way normally we call that region D uh, he called it region R that's why I wrote an R down there you could call it whatever region you'd like uh, but suffice it to say if you have region R here you've got 2x squared plus y squared equals 1 and uh, you know as, as you're uh, looking at this and uh, you know trying to to make some sense of, of this all uh, by the way uh, you know, as you're looking at this, I think I called that a circle earlier. Forgive me, is that a circle? No, it sure looked like a circle. What What is it really? Yeah, it'd be, uh, you know, ellipse because we could divide the top and the bottom by a 2 here. But regardless, even if you didn't know that, you could still finish this problem. Uh, look, we can say here's your region R. And uh, you can, in, in just a moment, say, well, the top of this, you'd say y squared is equal to uh, 1 minus 2x squared, and y would be plus or minus the square root of 1 minus 2x squared. So up on top, we'd have this, right? The positive 1 minus 2x squared. Down below, we'd have the negative. Hey, look at that. Uh, why am I dealing with this? Well, right now, we'd either like to look at this as a type 1 region. I'm not calling it a type 1 solid, but a type 1 region or a, a type 2 region. And, uh, you know, it, at this point, of course, we have to be very careful, you know, in regards to, to how we'd be graphing this thing out. Uh, notice I didn't put any endpoints here. Uh, how would you like to, to look at this? Maybe as a, what do you think? Make it a type, type 1. We can make it type 1. You could say, look at all these vertical lines here. Uh, and, and that would be a Y boundary. So let's come back over here and we could say, well, I've got the original, you know, 5X squared plus 5Y squared down here. Here's a 6 minus 7X squared minus Y squared. We've got a 1. We've got our DZ. If this is a type 1 region, what's the next differential? We're going to have a D. Ooh, help me. Y. And we'd say up on top, we'd have this radical 1 minus 2x squared. Down below, we'd have this negative 1 minus 2x squared. And then we, of course, are going to move out to our dx. You can think, how in the world could I ever find, uh, you know, these last boundaries? You know, what, what would our x values be? And 
Well, think about it. These x values are occurring when what happens, guys? When y equals zero, right? So I could say, well, if this is my equation, if I let y equals zero, we wind up with 2x squared is equal to 1, x squared is equal to a half, and uh, without too much work, we'd see that x is plus or minus really a 1 over radical 2. So, you know, we're going to have all these vertical bars from negative 1 over radical 2 to positive 1 over radical 2. And uh, at this point, we could actually work this thing out. It definitely can be done very quickly, even on the TI-89. And in fact, this would be a great time to use the TI-89, to be quite honest. So we're going to type that in. I'm going to pause the video, uh, you know, just so you can uh, see the end result. Okay, you can see we've uh, wrapped up the problem by just typing that into the calculator. We've got a 3 pi root 2 over 2. Uh, if you bring up the calculator, you can see uh, the nice thing about it is you can pretty much visually check if, if things have been entered in pretty well. If you want to go up, you can and go more to the right to just check the rest of your uh, integral right there. So uh, that's the first problem. We're going to end the video right here. We'll make a second video for problem number two.